Good morning, everyone. It's been a while since I did a video, but today I've got something to talk about, and I have a couple minutes to film, and that is this piece of gear. It is a Pine Time smartwatch from Pine64, and the neat thing about it is that it has completely open source firmware in it. Now, it does the basic stuff that we'd expect from a watch. For example, if I double tap, right now it will show the time. It's almost 5 p.m. And you can see here that it's got some other stuff it's showing. It has a step counter, which is showing that it thinks I've done about 760 steps today. It shows the current date. It shows how much battery is used. So this is about half full. And we can swipe in a couple different directions to see other things. If I swipe here, we can see that I had an incoming call notification. And this is what it would look like if I were getting an incoming call from that number. And I could go ahead and answer or reject the call or mute the call here directly from the, uh, from the smartwatch. And that part actually works. I can hook this up to my Android phone and it will immediately show incoming call notifications. It'll even vibrate for me. And that's kind of neat. In addition to that, I can swipe down to get access to some of the other things. We've got a timer thing. We've got control over music on my phone. We've got stuff hooked up to let it do, do navigation. We have control over that step counter. We have control over a heart rate monitor. And this heart rate monitor will in fact show my heart rate. It takes it a second to figure out what's going on. And I don't know whether the heart rate number is accurate. Uh, that's probably not accurate. I don't think my heart rate is quite that high, but it only does the heart rate monitoring when it is, uh, when heart rate monitoring is enabled and the watch is awake, which means that it's not recording sort of long-term heart rate information. And it's got a timer thing. You can also go back by pressing the button here on the side. That's the only hardware button is one hardware button there on the side. And then the entire thing is a touch screen. There's also this screen, which lets me control uh, brightness notification, throw it into flashlight mode, and then uh, control some settings. And that's basically all this guy does. Now, um, in addition to the watch, the other thing that I got in the box with it is this charging dock. And let me go ahead and take the watch off and I'll be right back. Battery life. One of the advantages to the low power chipset in this thing is that the battery life really does last a week. In my test, this thing died after eight days. So that was with leaving it mostly on my wrist for the week. Um, the one downside I discovered in that test is that it does lose settings like double tap to wake up. It does lose settings like double tap to wake up when it runs out of battery power. It's not too bad to turn that back on. All right, so that's basically what this thing does. It's a watch, it shows the time and date. It can connect to your phone via Bluetooth. I know it works on my degoogled Android phone. I haven't tested it with anything else, uh, but I did see documentation for Linux phones on it. And it will sync time, it will show notifications. Then in addition to that, it has a uh, step counter feature and a heart rate monitor feature. The heart rate monitor feature isn't terribly convincing and I'm not especially convinced by the step counter either. I kept this thing on overnight and the next morning it showed me that I had done 500 steps. So it's gonna need some more filtering to be an effective uh, step counter. And with the default firmware, that's what this thing does. And for the price, this thing was $27. That's not terrible. A uh, smartwatch that the only thing smart it does is sync time and show notifications is okay for $27. I don't know that that's great, but it's not bad. But the really exciting thing about this is the possibility of being able to program it. And so it can connect to a phone via Bluetooth Low Energy, and it has this 1.3 inch touchscreen on it. And the one I have here is a sealed device. They've uh, glued the back on, so this is water resistant. And so this isn't what they recommend using for development. They also offer open ones where the back hasn't been glued on uh, for $2 cheaper and they come with a serial connector. The problem with developing on this sealed device rather than on the dev kit device without the back glued on is that if 
you were to flash firmware on here that froze and therefore prevented additional firmware from being, flash, from being flashed, you would have to wait for the battery to run all the way down and for it to reboot before you would get another opportunity to flash it. And even that wouldn't be super reliable because you'd have to catch the exact window where it rebooted. Whereas if you have an unsealed device and you have access to the serial port on this, you can, uh, you can access the debug stuff and get new firmware flashed on that even with uh, broken test firmware on here. Now, the processor in this thing isn't some sort of sort of computer scale processor. I don't think you could effectively run Linux on this. It wants an embedded operating system because it has kilobytes of RAM instead of megabytes and it doesn't offer uh, memory protection in the processor. But nonetheless, having Bluetooth and a touch screen is sufficient that you could use this as a user interface to an application running on your phone. And the flexibility of that is sort of, it, you can do pretty much anything with that sort of setup. Any application that you could imagine running on a screen this size with touch and the ability to vibrate, you could run on this by having the user interface display on the watch and having the actual logic run immediately on the phone over Bluetooth. That's something that I'd like to play with. I don't know if I'll get a chance to play with that but I think that is pretty neat. And I don't know, that's basically all I think I have to say about this thing. I guess the one thing that I didn't talk about too much is the awful rubbery strap here. It works okay, although my wrist gets kind of sweaty, but we do have sort of standard watch, uh, watch strap pins connecting this in. It's a 20 millimeter strap, I believe. And so if I were to get better watch strap, I could throw that right on and that would probably solve the problem. Although for the price of this thing, getting a decent watch strap costs about the same as the watch. All right, thanks for watching about the Pine Time from Pine64. Go ahead and check in the description of this video for a link to my blog and follow me via RSS. That's the most reliable way to keep up with the stuff that I post without worrying about algorithms or anything, getting between you and the great videos that I post that you wanna watch and have a wonderful rest of your day.